Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 21 Day Mindful Movement and Breathwork Challenge. Today is day six. And what I want to do today is a really short functional movement sequence that will also combine with a breath practice that's really helpful for mental focus. For this sequence, you won't need too much. We'll be doing most of it standing, um, except for the breath work portion, which will sit for that. So you can either sit, uh, I'm going to demo floor sitting, but you can sit on a chair or feel free to sit on a couch or anywhere that's comfy. Oh, and also you're welcome to do the standing stuff seated. Um, all of these movements can be converted into a sitting practice. So if you don't feel like standing right now, feel free to just stay where you are, follow along. You can always visualize yourself doing the movements as well. And honestly, you get a lot out of that. So um, it can be really beneficial. So go with what feels good for today, what you feel like you need. And when you've decided, you can come on over into your seat or your stance and we'll get started. Why don't we begin with taking two or three mindful breaths? If you find it helpful, feel free to join me in a inhale with an exhale sigh. This can be just a really wonderful way to help yourself arrive fully in the present moment. <sighs> Maybe two more nice, gentle, mindful breaths. Breathing in whatever way is right and good, but maybe taking a bit of attention to the quality of your breath. What do you notice? Our first functional movement today is going to involve a bit of twisting, of um, thoracic twisting or spinal twisting. And it might be helpful to just warm up the body really gently. So we're going to start with uh, what I call the flying twist pose. And what I want to invite you to do here is begin with a micro twist. So you can just really gently twist the body from side to side. As you begin this movement, you may kind of track that your feet need to be placed slightly differently to have that really great integrity stance. So going for that good solid base under you and then just letting the upper body move side to side. You could go back to our creativity exercises we've been doing and, and think that you're maybe finger painting on the floor, some half circles around you. How fluid and smooth can you make your arm movement as you rotate side to side? Maybe becoming 2% more mindful and curious about your breath and your body. And feel free to stay with the smooth, uh, slow micro twist. If you wanna speed it up, one thing that can be really nice is to tap alternating hips as you come around and maybe speed it up just a tiny bit. This movement here is also really nice and regulating for the nervous system. So it can be a nice way to help you really get present. And you may just find the just right pace for you here. Now, if you have a favorite way to warm up your body and the flying twist is, is not just quite right for you, I really wanna invite you to Take your time here and do your favorite warm up. What do you usually do to get your body warmed up and ready to move? Let me take a minute and just do that. Hmm. We'll do just a couple of pendiculations. 
do or continue with your own warm up. And how we do pendiculations is it's called a yawn stretch, really. So all we do is we pretend we're yawning. Right? And then track what movement goes with the yawn all by itself. You know, if you're if you're feeling a little bit of stiffness or soreness anywhere in the body, that's a good idea to keep them pretty mindful and gentle. Just go with what feels good. Maybe yawn two or three times. Get a good pendiculation stretch going. Jeffy um, is our myofascial mascot over here, so he may uh, demo. A animals do the best pendiculation, so he may demo one for us later. So let's move into our first um, mindful functional twist. And what this one looks like, all we're really going to do is we're going to turn behind us with an arm. You can do palm face up or palm face down, but the idea is really to go with what you would normally do. So maybe imagine you're sitting in your car and you realize that your purse is in the back seat on the floor. So what do you do to, what's your sort of automatic way to go get that? I really, and I'll, I'll explain why this is my favorite twist is because there a uh, time that this often comes up is if you're walking your dog and the dog suddenly gets a, gets a mystery sniff back there and you kind of have to reach with your hand on the leash behind you. So never my, whenever my guy goes off behind me, I'm, I'm usually like, oh good, I get to do my favorite twist <laughs> for a minute. So that's the movement. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to get really mindful now with foot placement under us. So here's where we get into a concept called tensegral range. Um, I'll put some links in the comments so you can get a longer explanation on that. But for now, let's just think of it as the foot placement where you feel the most secure and stable in your stance under you. So think of that like if a big strong wind came to blow behind you, this is the foot placement that you feel the most ready for that wind. Once you've got that, then when you're, when you're ready, we're just going to take the hands in front of us and reach them out wide and then bring them back together. We'll just do this a few times to get to really activate mindful awareness. You can even track this with your breath if that's helpful. Maybe inhaling to reach open and exhaling to close. And on our next inhale, let's take the arms out. And then we're going to pretend again that we're reaching back behind us. And find a range here where you feel intuitively that your back is okay, your spine is happy, everything is good. This is your twist. Let's do it to the other side. So let's just do a few more of these just to get the, the mindful element going. You can always um, rub out the arms, give them a little love in between. So we're gonna inhale. Open. Exhale, close. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. And then on our next inhale, we're going to open and we're going to reach behind us with that left hand now and just, just wiggle around until you've got like, yeah, right here is my really good twist. Turn your head and you might be sort of looking at your thumb or maybe gazing at the, the wall behind you. As soon as you still feel like you fatigue a bit, then come on out of it. Rub out those shoulders and the arms. Let's do that one more time, same way. So we're going to inhale and reach. It's a really great way to also open up the shoulders. You can roll those uh, palms up and then exhale toward the chest. Inhale, 
we call this catching the rain, where you just imagine you're catching the rain in your hands and you're going to kind of pour that water out your thumbs behind you. Just really super light. Exhale in. And then on your next one, we're going to inhale, open, maybe just do a slight rain catch, but not too much because we're going to twist. And then reach behind you. So you might need to modify that arm position here. This time I want you to really get curious. So find where you are, where you're comfortable. Like you're not moving into strain. You're not forcing or pushing. You're just kind of in your comfy twist. And then pick something to look at on, on your wall so that you can kind of mark where, where your natural range is. And then let's uh, see if you can remember that. It's kind of hard. I don't have quite enough marks on my wall, but uh, I, I think I got a, I think I got a ballpark. Okay, let's rub out those shoulders and arms. And then one more time, catching the rain. So we're gonna roll the palms up and water's gonna pour out the thumbs behind us. And we're gonna exhale to close. Inhale. Exhale. And then on your next inhale, you might have to back off a little bit on your roll thumb, but we're going to go back into our twist. Again, just pretend you're reaching behind you. Your dog caught a little scent back there and you kind of got to tug back a little bit. And again, tracking for that sense of this is a comfortable twist. My body's pretty happy here. I'm not pushing or forcing. And then let your head naturally follow that line and you can pick something. All right. If in order for us to really have this test accurate, you might also need to place your block where your feet are, just so that you're also in the same kind of approximate area. We're gonna need a wall. You don't have to do this with a wall, but it can be helpful. So if you have a wall, all we're gonna do is reach back into our twist into that comfortable range. And we're gonna see if we can get our fingertips. We're gonna get our fingertips. Where did you see me? There we go. We're gonna get our fingertips to touch on the wall. And then we're gonna go into our twist. And this time we're gonna tension our fingertips into the wall and we're gonna let the wall help us get the just right amount of tension through the whole body. In tensegrity, we talk a lot about distributing tension really well through the body. So it's not necessarily a resistant stretch. It's a little bit different than that, but same idea. Sort of that isometric contraction, very similar to that. So we would just go into our twist, reaching the arms and then and then going behind and then you're just going to have fingertips on a wall and then you want to bring get your fingertips nice and active and then we're going to feel into a sense of even tension through the arm through the body through the back that one more time to each side just really feel into how can you get that how can you get the wall to help you do your twist in such a way that you have that tension integrity through your body the, the uh, tension the tensional network is even throughout Can you find that sort of just right place? Where you're in the sort of perfect twist for you. And then just for fun, you can come back to your mat. And you might want to place your feet wherever you left your box. They're around the same place as they were before. And then let's repeat. And if you remember where your point was, we can kind of get a sense on if our range of movement changed. So let's go through the same sequence. So we're gonna exhale, hand to heart, inhale, open, roll palms. Exhale, hands to heart. 
Inhale, roll. Exhale. And then on your next inhale, we're going to open hands up. You might need to ease off on that palm roll. And then we're going to reach behind us. So again, keeping it functional. Can you imagine this is something really real life movement? You're reaching for something behind you or somebody calls behind you and you're looking. And then this time, get into your tensegral range in the twist. And you, without the wall, find that even tension. And then find your point. Wow. That was like two feet. Did your, did, did your range of movement open up or change? It's not bad if it doesn't. It's not good if it does. It's just something to, you know, good information. So let's do that on the other side. We're going to do the whole sequence. We're going to exhale. Hands to heart. Inhale, open and roll. Exhale. Inhale. So you can pour the water out your thumbs behind you. Exhale. And then we'll do on our next inhale, we're going to open and reach behind you. And again, feel that sense of tension throughout. Look behind you. Okay, you're still, you're not forcing that twist or Making it bigger, just kind of go with what feels good. Oh, maybe uh, bind it with a little bit of rebounding. So for the rebounding, you can just imagine you are on a really soft trampoline or some soft moss and, and then just play, just have fun. If you were standing on a trampoline, what would your body automatically default to? Where would you kind of just go? Would you want to just jump or would you want to do bigger um, bounces, or smaller bounces? Maybe let's rub our arms out one more time. Just give those arms a little love. They really worked hard for you today. Give them a little thank you, thank you. And then we're going to go to our seated position and do a little bit of breath work here. So I'm going to show you um, on the blocks. I'll probably sit today in the hero position, which, which is just sitting on blocks, and then I have my heels back behind me. Um, so for hero pose, it can sometimes be not so good on the knees. So you can track that, and if your knees say, no, thank you, then go ahead and find a different seated posture. It could be cross-legged, or you can just grab a chair and sit in the chair. So focus breathing. This In, in yoga, this is called Veloma breathing. We're not going to do full Veloma breathing. We're going to do a very bite-sized version of it. We're going to do like the beginnings of Veloma breathing. And how this works is we're going to bring our hands to our rib cage. And when we inhale, we're going to see if we can, and we don't force it, but we're just going to see if we can feel the ribs moving out to the sides, kind of into the hands. And the idea is that the inhale is like the exercise. Eventually, we want to do two inhales and then let the exhale be passive. But for now, let's start with just one. So bring your hands to your side ribs if you can. You can always just track this with your mind, if not. And you're going to just do a little pop of air and let the ribs expand out and then exhale passively. Just relax. If you're new to this, you might want to just breathe normally in between sets. So we could do like one Veloma and then two easy breaths and then one. And then we can just increase. Um, the sort of exercise breath. Okay, so let's let's do it together. So inhale and exhale passive. Inhale and exhale passive. And feel free to rest in between. We can go on to step two here. 
Let's maybe take three or four just regular breaths and give yourself an opportunity to track your inner state. <clears throat> this breath work can be quite stimulating. So you can just check and see, maybe you've got enough energy now and that's enough. And if that's the case, I really celebrate you listening to your body. Stage two, we're going to do two puffs of air on the in, and then we're gonna exhale passively. The ideal with this exercise is to breathe in and out through the nose. Sometimes that's not a thing that wants to happen. So feel free to uh, let yourself breathe with your mouth if you need to, but give it a try to do your two puffs through the nose. So it looks like this. And um, we'll just kind of do two and then rest a little bit. We'll take a break and feel the impact of it. Let's do once more with the hands so that you can really feel the movement of the rib cage. So two puffs through the nose. And then normal breathing. And then what I would love to do is give you about a minute to explore on your own. And you might want to keep the hands there just to kind of check that you're, you're getting that sideways expansion, or you can now that you've felt it, just go with awareness. So let's go for a minute, totally on your own. You may do five in a row and rest. You may do two in a row and rest. You may do 10 in a row. And I really want to invite you to just Trust your body and your own inner knowing. You may find uh, a deep regulating breath will happen just all on its own spontaneously. And that's a really good sign. So if you track for that, know that you're doing it. You're doing really well. I'm just beginning to finish up. Letting the breath return to normal. And as always, let's take a bit of time to steep in the effect of your practice. Really notice. What's here now? Can you get even more curious about the feel of the breath inside? Maybe even feel the way the diaphragm massages the inner rib on a natural, normal breath. Or maybe you notice how the lungs give the heart a little hug every time we breathe. Maybe you notice something else altogether. Whatever it is, enjoy for one more minute. And I really want to invite you to, if you've come to a really nice place in your practice and you're not quite finished, I really want to invite you to stay longer, hit pause on that video and just keep going with your breath work or with your mindful movement. 
And I really want to congratulate you for doing this practice with me today. I'm so glad you're joining me on this challenge and I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you are too. With that, I will wish you a wonderful rest of your day and send you a namaste.